Democratic Senator Ron Wyden of Oregon serves on the Budget and Finance Committees. Welcome to you, Senator. Thank you, Matt. Good to be on your show. Uh, thanks for being here. Uh, help us make sense of this. Lots of moving parts. The politics and policy of this are very thick. Uh, where do you think we are at this hour? Are you optimistic, pessimistic? Why? Matt, it's got to be done. The country is relying on a real solution. Cannot uh, allow this uh, default uh, and the uh, catastrophic consequences that it would bring. Here's the bottom line. Right now, the negotiations are in what I call the roller coaster stage. A specific proposal sort of picks up support, goes up to the top of the roller coaster, and gets criticized and then plummets back down. Now, I will tell you the approach that I think can bring bipartisan support is to recognize that the best way to cut the deficit is to put people back to work in the private sector. When we do that, then we're going to bring in more revenue. We won't be spending so much on unemployment and food stamps. Your next guest is going to be Bill Bradley. He's pursuing, uh, as he has in the past, a bipartisan uh, approach. Uh, I'm picking up on some of his ideas with Senator Dan Coats for tax reform. It produced 6.3 million new jobs. The last time we did it, we ought to do it again. Uh, talk, talk a little bit about the political molecule as you see it, because as Mike Vaccaro was saying from the White House, you've got, you know, if the if the leadership, and I, it seems like pre the president and Boehner at least are trying to work in good faith to try and craft something that can get through the House. If, if you go too far on the tax revenue side, you lose the Tea Party Republicans. If you if you lean too heavy on the the entitlements, uh, you, you, you really risk losing some on the left. What's the right way to think about how to thread that needle? The, the right way is to focus on approaches that generate revenue that both political parties can support. Tax reform uh, will do that. Uh, right now, we're spending a boatload of money on unemployment, food stamps, got more than 10 million folks uh, unemployed. Let's put them to work in the private sector with growth-oriented uh, tax reforms. And we've seen it work in, in, in the past. And I will tell you, the only solutions right now are going to have to be bipartisan ones the cut cap and balance however you you feel about it it didn't touch on the jobs issue at all and it wasn't bipartisan so the issues that uh, uh, we're focused on are going to require bipartisan support I've been working uh, with the gang of six I don't agree with all of uh, the specifics but that kind of bipartisanship is what it's going to take now uh, on the gang of six idea in particular and I've looked at this and you know I'm an old budget wonk from uh, the, the the Clinton White House budget office it's kind of a blueprint but uh, a lot of details obviously left to be done. In some ways, it's almost a uh, emblematic of the fact that our current political institutions don't work because it seems like a workaround. It sets up lots of instructions from a bipartisan group to the committees that have to go figure out cut this much or slow the growth this much in these areas, raise this much in revenue. But if you don't do it, there's this kind of fail-safe mechanism where a bipartisan group of five senators of each party can come forward. Is the very way that this is structured proof that the Senate as an institution is broken? Well, it, it certainly has been distressing in recent months to see all this polarization. But when Dan Coates and I can come together on tax, uh, tax reform, Dick Durbin and, and Tom Coburn come together on the Gang of Six, one of the most liberal, one of the most conservative, we can get results here if we put the country's interests first. Now, let me give you another idea. You made mention of the question of, of whether tax reform was actually doable. One of the ideas that I'd like to see pursued is if there was wasn't bipartisan tax reform within a date certain what you could do as an enforcement mechanism is just go in there and give all those tax breaks all those tax expenditures a haircut you just say look the best way to actually uh, produce some more revenue is bipartisan tax reform if you don't produce it by a date certain we're just going to go in there and we're going to give a haircut to all of those tax expenditures there's a trillion dollars worth of them that's a way to generate some revenue and this is because um, because I think if there's not some kind of serious enforce enforcement mechanism in the way you're describing I think people are right to be skeptical because otherwise it would be like there's a skeptical a, of Washington I can't possibly well, believe well somebody exa might see exactly exactly because I can see a scenario where the debt ceiling gets raised in some way there's a sort of champagne corks popping over some version of what you've described but six months or a year from now there's nothing really to hold folks feet to the fire to mean that we actually get the the, the, the specifics that were, were talked about 
I think the Gang of Six has one uh, enforcement process. I just suggested another one on, on your show. You know, the bottom line is to recognize, as Senator Reid has said, you've got to have some balance here. That means everything has got to be part of the equation. You can't just say it's going to be one part of the budget. But what was missing in cut, cap, and balances, it never mentioned jobs. It never mentioned jobs once. And by the way, when Democrats and Bill Bradley teamed up to generate that growth-oriented tax package, they didn't need a constitutional amendment to do it. Ronald Reagan and Bill Bradley did it because it was right for the country. Dan Coats and I are trying to do the same sort of thing. That's what it's going to take to uh, get this country back on track. Now, I, I, I gather, Senator, the, everybody's taking the weekend off, which seems a little mysterious, I think, too. I'm, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be right here at my, my post, Matt, and we're going to be talking about uh, uh, ways to, uh, to bring some bipartisanship around tax reform and other approaches that will bring the deficit down. I'm not going anywhere. Well, it, 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 kudos, kudos to you. Here, here's a, a question, though. We, did, we just got about a minute left. Uh, for folks who are watching this, you know, it's, it's such a roller coaster, as you said. As we move into next week, and we're really getting down to crunch time, you know, you've got the debt ratings, uh, the, the debt agencies saying that they're, they're really threatening a, a, a potential downgrade, even if, which seems crazy, even if, even if the debt ceiling is raised, they're talking about a downgrade, which seems, in my view, a little out of line, given that they were, uh, you know, not exactly on the case during the uh, subprime uh, housing mess. But p putting that aside, how should average Americans, our, our viewers right now, make sense as we go into next week of whether there's really going to be progress toward Washington getting its act together to do what has to be done? I, I think they should watch uh, first to see if there is real support on both the Democratic and the Republican side of the aisle. If there's not, if you've got folks uh, in the Tea Party and, uh, and the most progressive wing of the Democratic uh, Party just going at uh, each other, it's not going to happen. And what we've got to do is see by early next week a balanced uh, approach. I think the reason I've focused on tax reform, it's a way, first of all, to put our people back to work. It's a way to generate revenue that both sides can support, and we won't be spending so much on unemployment and food stamps. Uh, Senator Ron Wyden, a sensible voice, pulling both parties together, pressing for tax reform. Uh, I applaud you, sir, and hope next week you can, can keep, keep doing this good work as we get toward the end game. Thank you, Matt.